my name's Boltor, and today I wanted to give people what they've been asking for. This is one of my more requested videos, one of the more the kind of the thing that people are asking me more and more. How do you beat Queen L Elena? I I'm gonna just butcher that name because I don't really care. You guys know what I mean. It's the extreme difficulty, uh, extreme difficulty PVE challenge and. It took me a little while to get around to doing this video because I've been super busy that and just having to wait for that quest to pop up. So I have Defeat Queen Elena in a PvE challenge, Difficulty Extreme. Now the thing that makes this um, this fight so extreme in difficulty is that she starts out with more mana than you. She starts, I think, at two mana instead of just one. So how do you combat that? How do you combat your opponent having such an immense advantage to start with? Well, two things. One, you start out with early stall, like sleep. You start out with ramp, so you can kind of close the gap, mana-wise or resource-wise, with New Horizons. And you play some of the early game removal, like Noxious Fumes. This is a rehashed deck that that came to me from Enoch. E it was primarily used to, um, or not Enoch, Enoch's the hero, I'm sorry. This comes to me from Drygord, who, as people know, is one of my favorite deck builders in the game right now more for fun decks than actual like meta decks but anyway so this deck is pretty much designed to just flood the board with dudes right you try uh i tried to the deck called for enoch which not everyone's gonna have it called for more tombs of the damned which not everyone's gonna have i really wanted to make this a budget list something that people who just have starter decks could probably afford now I know that uh, Force Wielder and Foundry Engineers and some other uncommons like uh, Noxious Fumes even, or no that's not, uh, or anyway, some cards people aren't going to have full play sets of, so the numbers can be tweaked as you need. And it doesn't have to be this deck that kills Queen Elena. Aliana? Aliana? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Again, doesn't really matter to me. I also think she starts with like 30 life. I'm trying to remember back when I first started playing Spellweaver, it was uh, Lord Darius, or like it was a it was Nephros, only he was a, under a different name, and he had two mana and thirty life, and it was a pain in the ass to fight because corruption is hard enough as it is, and then you add the extra difficulty. Also, the other thing that makes this fight so hard are the angels that Elena Eliana summons. Flash Freeze is going to be your best way of dealing with them. Flash Freeze, or Noxious Fumes, or just even a Gigantic Spectral Alright. It's stuff like that. You kind of need big creatures. But one of the things that really helped in this fight, I found, and I will be doing a video, or I th actually I think it's going to be the back half of this video, where we're going to be fighting with her with this deck. And it might take me a couple takes, because this deck doesn't guarantee you a win, it's just outside from building a meta deck and taking that meta deck in to fight her, which you can do. Uh, Elves works really well. Rage Rush can. It kind of it kind of sputters if she draws really well and a lot of life gain. Hermelian Elves, if you have them. You know, if you w need a meta deck, like if I were to run what Fuzz so effectually calls so effectually calls Casual Dar uh, Daris, if I were to take that in against Queen El Eliana, I could beat her with my with one hand tied behind my back with my eyes closed. But this is a budget deck, and I wanted to use the budget deck against her. So also a kind of the combination of charged all right, powering up sleep so that sleep hits for or stays in effect for three four turns is huge if you're not having to worry about that angel for a number of turns. So. I showed you guys the deck list, and I'm going to take just the, that exact deck list, and I'm going to go in and fight the boss on camera for you guys. But because I'm going to probably have to do a number of takes, I'm actually going to cut the video here. So when I come back, I'll say welcome back and yada yada. So I will be and gentlemen, we're going right to take back. a shot at Queen Elena, Elena, who was, you know, whatever. I ruin names. Not that great of a t an opener. You're definitely digging for Force Wielder. You're definitely digging for Charged. All right, you're definitely digging for your foundry engineers you're also digging for new horizons don't get me wrong new horizons is a big deal especially when you get to play it on turn one 
Because it really helps you close the gap and go a little faster and catch up to the opponent. Not playing any skill shrines in the deck, only because I wanted to keep this more of a budget list. So it's if you have them, definitely include them. And definitely throw back a New Horizons. I also built this deck so it was one of each aspect. If you want to tweak it a little bit, then to include some consumed spirits, by all means. We're going to kill off his dude. Now see, even though she started with extra mana, it doesn't really matter because she didn't have any kind of follow-up. And we actually get a really good opener right now. I, this is my second attempt with the deck. I actually lost the first game only because I attacked all out when I didn't have lethal. And um, the, the AI top decked removal for my blocker. And, well, it's a whole thing. <laughs> anyway... I lost because I am an idiot. And anyone who watches me stream or live or whatever, or watches my videos knows I am a massive idiot. <laughs> so let's see. I, let's see. I think I'm just going to drop the Disquisitive Spirit. And that's going to be it. We can. No, we're going to hold back. Now remember, Flash Freeze is in the deck to kill angels. So when angels are out. You want to make sure that you save the Flash Trees. Now, I want to save the Flash Trees for Guardian of the Faithful, only because she's harder to deal with and harder to block. So we're actually going to throw out it on this turn, just to be mana efficient. So we're going to throw out a Force Wielder and another guardian library guards library guards are kind of a big deal because they are your speed three blockers and the, the point of this deck wow is to overrun your opponent with dudes and see even though the three three and the four four could have gotten in for some damage the ai didn't attack the ai understanding how the ai thinks is a big part of how you win this match and yes we want to make sure we give this guy all the energy. Whoops. I meant to click Force Mage Protector, but I guess it doesn't necessarily matter. So, the AI doesn't play Triangelica. That's one of the big deals about this. So you don't have to immediately, you don't really have to rush in killing the angels, because they're not going to just win from the back row. They have to attack you. And see how even though you've got a 6-6, six, six, because I've got an 8-3 that could potentially trade, it doesn't attack. Again, understanding how the AI thinks is a big deal. And the good news is we get to I get to show you something that I wanted to show you about this matchup. We make three golems, and those golems are going to attack next turn, and they're going to instantly trigger Guardian of the Faithful and kill her. Straight out. No ifs, ands, or buts. So that's an 8-8, eight, eight. that's fine. Again, probably not going to attack. And honestly, if she does, we do trade with the 8-8. Eight, eight. Okay, so we make this guy three, give him some more golems to play with. Force Mage, give him two energy. No, we're not gonna give him the other energy. You wanna make sure you give him multiples of two just because otherwise you have energy basically wasted. So I wanted to show I want to show you this. We're going to declare attacks with three golems. The golems were free. We don't care if they die. Soon as you hit that declare button, boom. Sacrifices. They don't get a say in it. And that and this is you know this works for outside of AI games too. They don't get she doesn't get a say in it. It just automatically happens. And that's your advantage. So now he's got a 10-10. which we don't really care about. Because in all honesty, if we really cared about it, then we can use the Force Wielder to pump up our Spectral R right. You know what I mean? So let's see. Things get a little weird when it's a stalemate like this. But pretty much, as long as you just stick to the plan of... For a second there, I thought I was going to Noxious Fumes my own dude. <laughs> All you do is you stick to the plan of 
building up massive hordes of golems and charging. Now, I did Darius as the hero only because it's I know you can get him for free, basically. He's the starter deck hero. Well, that's fine. The AI does run that card. But again, the 10-10, screw it. We'll block with golems, and we can even shield the golems, you know what I mean? So, just stick to the game plan. You make golems, and you use the golems to get free kills on the Guardian of the Faithful. You just don't even care that your opponent is basically just going to be dropping dudes every turn. You don't even care that they might pump up one angel massively. As long as you have creatures to buy yourself the time to get to this point, you don't even care. Now, what we can do is we can... Oh, I already attacked. Wow, I'm an idiot. See, I'm a special kind of stupid. <laughs> Which begs the question, why are you guys watching this video? <laughs> so, Force Mage Protectors are kind of the big deal in this matchup because they let you manipulate the board and the manipulate combat. And hey, if you manage to get a massive Spectral Alright and you manage to wipe out their Speed 3 blockers, which you can do thanks to Library Guards and... Let's make sure we can get a kill on one of these guys. Because this guy's going to come down and block something. It's probably going to block one of the two threes. But that's why we held on to the Noxious Fumes. Yep. So we don't get a kill on the li Relic Guards, which, of course, we don't really care about. We are going to get a kill on everything else. And you know what? After they've spent their energy, the charged R8s can be good chump blockers for big creatures like Protectors of the Innocent. Now, Tombs of the Damned, I put a single copy in here because I'm almost positive, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive you get a free copy of it with the Corruption Starter deck. I think you get one copy. Again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's in there basically to give you extra free creatures, and it's the only double aspect card in the entire deck. I'm actually going to play it here just so we get the extra one. Remember, if you have Enoch, he's probably the better hero. But, again, just because I didn't, I wanted this to be a budget deck, a free deck, as you know, it might be said, I wanted that to be the point of the deck. And Enoch isn't a free hero. So he's got no speed 3 blockers. So we're actually just going to go ahead and kill and swing in for 13. When you can poke through damage, you go for it. Just remember, if they have a card in hand and two mana, pacify is a very real threat. So you have to keep that in mind. Right? Okay. So, we're going to pump this up for another four. Pump out three more free golems. The thing to remember is that even though they have big, um, the Queen Elena has big creatures, they cost mana. The point of the whole thing is to overrun him with free creatures. And yes, a golem might technically cost one mana or whatever, but the fact that it's free and you pump them out with a creature ability is what's important. Now, Foundry Engineer, pump them full of energy. Force Wielder for more combos. Actually, we can pump this guy up with three more energy immediately. Three more energy here. And so we're going to go ahead, because he played another or the AI played another Guardian of the Faithful. We do have to sacrifice, we basically have to skip a turn of attacking for lethal, but we sacrificed three, and out come, what, eight this turn? Two, three, four, five, six, oh, I'm sorry, seven. So seven, we've... I would tr I think every day I will trade three golems for seven golems. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you see the board is even getting stretched. The screen. She is just a little bitch, isn't she? <laughs> just, ugh. 
it's getting kind of annoying, but what can you do, right? So, again, just attack with... I'm even throwing zombies in there because zombies are even cheaper, quote-unquote, than golems. Now, that's all four. If you have to wait to get through all four Guardians of the Faithful, go for it. You know what I mean? It's all about just getting the win. may not be quick. may not be pretty. It may not be the smoothest thing. But I'm not even gonna. I could fill up the board with even more crazy golems. I'm not going to. Out comes the protector of the innocent. The game lags a, just a little bit when the screen gets this stretched. That's perfectly fine. It's normal. It happens. So now we're just actually. You know what? Now. Now you just alpha strike. It doesn't matter. You can poke through the damage with the, with the spectral. All right. If they've got no speed four block or speed three blockers, but there's you know if you you just don't even care throw out a flash freeze because why not I'm not even gonna bother to shield them because we are swinging in for obscene amounts of damage so basically this deck is free i mean it's starter deck stuff it's you may need a couple extra copies of foundry engineer but if you really need to you can fill the room that i think Foy, uh, force wielder and foundry engineer are the only cards that aren't basically commons, I mean, other than Tombs of the Damned, but, wow, it's still going, <laughs> so, this deck works, you guys saw it work, it, I've used it before against, this is not my first time playing Queen Elenia, or how, again, however I butcher her name, so, the deck works, I hope it works well for you guys, again, Foundry Engineers, and, ooh, Library Guards too, if you're finding that the uncom you don't have full playsets of the uncommons, fill them with disarms. You can fill them with more ancient wisdoms. You could probably cut a new horizons or two. Fill them with more sleeps. All you need to do is stall until you get your combo pieces. And then once the combo pieces are there, you just keep building and building and building your massive army of um, golems. And then you strike. You wipe the floor with them. If you want to put in more spectral arites because you're thinking more, I want to swing with the gigantic 20, 30 spectral, all right, then go for it. That's, you know, this deck is very versatile. It's kind of adaptive. That's why I like it. And it doesn't have the the only one win condition. Again, if you have Enoch, the Steel Horror, he's definitely a better hero than Basic Darius. But again, Basic Darius is free. You get him from the starter deck, so I wanted to include him. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it informative. I'm hoping to help a lot of new players who I've been talking to who find Queen uh, Elena very challenging. And so you might have, to, if you don't have these two decks, again, it's not the only deck that can take her down, but it's a good one. And if you have to wait to unlock Wisdom and Corruption, then just put that quest on the back burner and do something else. Fight the AI. Get a little better understanding as to how the AI thinks. Watch the AI when you play games with it. Think, you know, watch how it thinks. Watch how it reacts to certain situations. Like I said, that's probably the biggest thing that helps you with this game. Now, thank you everybody so much for watching. I already said that. You know, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, that whole YouTuber speech thing that we all do. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helps people because that's pretty much why I do this video, this channel. Help people help new players love the game because nothing's more f I can tell you from first hand I got so frustrated when I did these extreme PB challenges until I kind of figured everything out so trust me we have all been there we've all lose the AI even people who are at the top of the ladder still occasionally lose the AI so don't feel too bad it happens sometimes the AI gets the nuts nut draws thank you everyone so much for watching that's number three so you know it's the last one May the cards rise to meet you and bring good RNG to your enemies, enemies.